Okay, I mixed up all my colours, as you can see. Beautiful range of blues. So I've got some light blues, some mid-tone blues, and, and a contrasting blue, and white, and some gold. Now, I'm going to put a couple of little tiny drops into the white. This is just two drops. That's silicon oil. And I'm going to mix that. Now the amount of pigment that I, I put into each one of these was enough to make it make them opaque so they have an opaqueness so when you pull out it's a fairly opaque, it's not, not transparent. But with the gold, I didn't put a lot of gold pigment in, it's a little bit more transparent. So that will create a different effect. Alright, so now I'm ready to go. Um, Actually, before I do, when I used the um, pure pigment pigments, I actually had to I mixed them first with a little bit of acetone. One of them, I just wanted to see what, what would happen. One of them I mixed with a little bit of acetone before I put it in the resin. Just, just to break the pigment up. Sometimes it doesn't mix in very well. This one didn't mix in very well, so I, I for this one I put a little tiny bit of alcohol. 100% alcohol before I put it into the resin and that just um, mix, I mixed it to a, like a paste and so it mixed in better into the resin. Alright, All right. I'm going to start with some of the dark blue. Okay, now I've got this, this tool here, I'm just going to see what happens. So if I go across this way. So I might get like a jellyfish sort of thing. But and that's too wide. Not yeah. just do it as just as a straight. So I'll take it from the, from the bottom, maybe move it a slightly different angle.
to show you what I've done. So you can see I've just sprinkled that. I don't know whether it's going to stay there or not. We'll find out. So they're like jellyfish. These will go in my underwater ocean dreaming series. Not sure which way they're going to look the best. And I may do another layer. Okay, I'm going to do a, a second layer on this jellyfish um, painting that I've done, dip ditch. And I've just taped up the side just with painter's tape because I usually use bare brand the cloth tape because uh, it's stronger, but I'm just going to do a few pulls. It's just there just to make sure nothing runs out. Um, so I'm just going to do some pulls. And what I've done is I've mixed up the, some of the same colours that I used in the, the first layer. And I've also mixed up some of the same, the pigments, some of the pigments that I've got. And I've mixed them with alcohol, pure alcohol. So it's um, this one. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to just experiment a little bit on this one. And I'm, I've got three. I've just done the, the blue, that sort of, um, it's what, I can't remember what it's called. The, the cobalt teal and the white. This is, these are just pure pigments. And the blue, that was the metallic uh, pigment, the, the, Le, the Re, Lares Cosmic Blue. So I just used those three and I added some, um, some of this to them. And they're, they're just in a little container with the lid on because they will evaporate if you leave the lid off. And when I'm ready to use them, I, I don't have an atomizer, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a toothbrush and I'm going to flick some of it into the resin. And hopefully it works. <laughs> and I've also mixed up a few uh, little tiny pots of, of resin with the same colours that I've used. So I've used the, the blue and the dark blue and, a, and that same teal and some white. So now I'm going to start just, just with some pools of clear resin to start with. I might just put, there's a few dead spots in here and I want to, want to get them. Okay, I'm just going to put a, a clear pool of clear resin there. And then This is the white, the white alcohol. Ooh. I'm just putting a bit of this the brush into it.
we can see. See, that's the, the, that's the alcohol with the pure pigment. It's just uh, language artist pigment that I've just mixed it with alcohol. It leaves like an interesting little floating thing on top, separates. It's quite, look at that. It's interesting, isn't it? Sort of like snowflakes. Anyway, that's, um, you know, some of that dust and I can clean up with some of that alcohol is not actually in any resin but that looks quite good like that and all these little the tendrils of the jellyfish and in here that's interesting in there so I quite like that um, using um, the alcohol and pigment I mainly used the white, I didn't use much of the other colours, they don't really stand out. I guess it depends on your background colour that you're using. But that looks quite good. So they really, you know, you have to really wait for the resin to get quite tacky before you can do those sort of linear dribbles because it gets too, um, it's, it's too hard to do when it's thin. But, you know, it takes me so long to do it that it goes thick while I'm doing it. But they turned out quite well. Not sure how these diptych will go together, but um, I think this side is actually more successful than the other side. So anyway, we'll see how it finishes up. This is um, just one side of the diptych of my um, jellyfish painting, and I'm just not happy with the composition of this one. This one, the other one, is working quite well, but this one isn't. So I'm going to just try and fix that up. This is a an acrylic pour, so I've just used some flow flow titanium white, and I've mixed in some liquid text and a little bit of water. Just so it's quite a thick pour, and I'm going to go around the area where I want to thin this out. what I just did. So I think that that has just, um, just brought some light back into that side of it. Because um, the other side I thought was working really nicely. I mean, it's it's obviously the direction I've got there in the space. But that one now is working better. Um, and that um, pour, acrylic pour, is actually blended it quite well into the resin there because it is so sort of drippy and messy. I've actually managed to blend it in with a little bit of a dirty pour in there. So that, that's worked okay. Alright, I've left, left these for a few days for the pours that I did on this part to dry. Well, actually probably about a week. And um, I've dusted off any of the gold pigment or the coloured pigment that I put down. And now I've just walled it with painter's tape because I'm going to lay the, the resin down and let it let it thicken for a while and then I'll take the sides off because I want this to flow over the edges. Well, I've waited for an hour and now I'm going to just pull off the tape. All right, well that layer of resin has dried and now I'm about to do some handwork. Um, I'm just going to use some acrylic paints and before I do though, I will be sanding, sand the surface lightly with some um, sandpaper, very fine sandpaper and that will just give a little bit of a tooth to the surface for the hand painting. And I, I may also use a spray, a UV spray as well, to, to help create a bit of a tooth.
Okay, so if you can see what I'm doing, I'm actually, I'm just painting some little white areas um, for the fish, sort of fish shapes, and I'm just painting them in white because I'm trying to work out my composition and the perspective of the fish, you know, that they're, they're travelling sort of across, across the two works, so... Um, I was just doing one at a time, but I really need to see the overall composition. So I have just sort of done some white, white fish, and then I'll go back in and, and work on each fish one at a time. But this is, it helps me, it'll help with my direction, and it'll also help with the scale and size of the fish, because I want the fish to slightly get a little bit bigger towards the middle part and then slowly disappear off into the distance. So it's just really, I guess, a way of sketching, sketching out across the work. Well, I've just finished all the fish. I'll just show you. So I painted some of the tendrils over the top of the fish so that it would create a bit of depth so in front and behind so pushing the, some fish back and some fish forward so just creating that illusion of depth um, so just a little bit of paint over the top of what's actually already there I didn't add any more I just picked, picked them up picked up the highlights on the tendrils and then I've made the fish flow across, so this is go they're going to be actually mounted on these white panels. And then I've got the fish flowing across these two jellyfish. And then off into the distance. Alright, I'm ready to do my final layer. So I have walled the sides of the artwork with painter's tape. And I've mixed up <coughs> uh, quite a big load of resin. I'm going to resin something, a few things. And I'm about to pour, pour the resin. So when I have poured the resin and got rid of the bubbles with the blowtorch, I then will leave this for probably, I don't know, maybe an hour to, between an hour and an hour and, uh, and two hours. Um, depends on the weather. Um, sometimes it, it gets tacky quicker sometimes um, slower so I'll wait to see and when when an hour's up I will take the tape off and let the, the clear resin flow down the sides so I want to make sure I get a complete coverage and I don't want any pits and I don't want any areas um, where it has missed missed covering the uh, resin particularly the the acrylic paint areas okay What I did is very, very subtle, but it's just a little bit of transparency. Just, let me see there. And down there, just a tiny bit, just to suggest another layer, so they're not just look like they're sort of pasted on top. <laughs> All right, I've waited for the final layer of resin to cure for at least a week. Sometimes I like to leave it longer than that before I even touch it, just to be sure that I don't mark it in any way. Now I've prepared these two backing boards. Now I've painted them on both sides. So I've painted them just with a, an undercoat on the back and I've got an undercoat underneath, uh, one layer or two layers of undercoat and then I've got a couple of layers of a really good quality gloss gloss white and so I've done that to both of those backing boards. Now I've left I've left this area in the middle here without any paint on it because I'm going to apply some uh, liquid nails 
to the back of the tiles and having a raw, raw surface like that is the best adhesive technique for, um, for liquid nails so it needs to go directly onto wood. Now what I've done is I have I put some marks on the board to, to show me where to place the artwork so that I'm not trying to move it around after I put the liquid nail on, nails on.